All right, hello everyone. It is Tuesday, uh, June something, June 27th. Time is 21.14 New York local time. We're currently sitting in our Asian session. Dollar index is trading higher, um, coming up to a buy side in efficiency. I think that it's going to have a reaction off of. So we're coming up to a buy side in efficiency here on the dollar. Of our percentage movers, natural gas is our greatest percentage mover from resettlement, but it virtually never moves during Asian session, so I kind of shied away from that. Um, all of our Forex is pretty quiet. Australian dollar did have a decent move, um, and I think, yeah, you could have been in on that, on this buy side inefficiency here. So, yeah, you could have. You could have. It was possible. I wasn't looking for it. Um, graded percentage mover here is the NASDAQ. We are down uh, 65 points on the NASDAQ from resettlement. And I am looking to get long the NASDAQ. I already tried longing this thing, uh, as you can see. Uh, last video I made, I made a, a live trade video where I showed you the two longs here, one extra contract here, and then covered that. So just took a loss here of uh, like a point. So I took a scratch. I took a scratch um, wanting to see if this thing comes back down. So if you're wondering, what uh, what this entry is, it's this volume imbalance plus a two tick spread. Okay, when I saw that price stopped me out for the first time, I figured we would come down to this volume imbalance. So that is what I'm still currently thinking. Coming down to this volume imbalance, we were filled long. Okay, don't really want to be stopped out just yet so that I entered on the volume imbalance plus uh, two tick spread okay I am interested in price coming back up to this buy side inefficiency and above this little eternal internal range liquidity right here so that internal range liquidity comes in at 56. 56 spot 25. Let's factor in a two tick spread. So we're going to sell two tick spread. It's going to be at uh, 75. Okay, and that's going to be two contracts. And then if it wants to go further than that, we will uh, play, it, play it by ear. Okay. Did we have stops taken here? This low comes in at 37 halves, 37 halves. This low comes in at 30, that was an equal lows. Okay, that's pretty dangerous. Price might wanna curl back and stop me out. So I'm, I'm actually gonna move this stop up pretty quickly to just a small, because these are equal lows. So price might just wanna come and be funky. Just made these equal lows here. And I don't like to see that. So if we get stopped out here, that's fine. I don't like to see these equal lows. Because price could curl back through and want to seek liquidity still. Did just reject this bear shorter block. Yeah, we're going to be stopped out. Okay, that was a scratch. Okay. Because I think we might punch through liquidity again. don't really like entering in on liquidity. It's not my ideal entry. I will get long again if I start to see some good stuff. I only want to enter in on inefficiency. don't just want to enter in purely on liquidity. Because it looks like the NASDAQ is going to punch, punch these lows. It's going to punch them. Punch them straight in the face. 
would be my best guess right now. I think the NASDAQ is going to have a punch lower. Okay, here's what I will do. Put on one contract, 35.75. Let's factor in spread. So spread right now is going to be two ticks. Two ticks. 35, 75, 1, 2. I'll get long immediately on one contract if we can punch these lows. Let's get long right at liquidity. Okay. Curling back down. I'm about 73% certain that we are going to punch through these lows. My entry is liquidity. It is also a buy, uh, sell side inefficiency, but it's really a liquidity entry, which I, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of that. That's kind of like turtle soup entries. I'm not very masterful with the turtle soup entries yet at all. So what this entry is, is it's this low plus spread. This low plus spread. And it could end up being, you know, dangerous, very dangerous, because I'm just sitting in where the stop orders are. And that's why I've, I've reduced myself down to one contract. This is making you think that this might be a double bottom. It's not. Tis not, in my opinion. There's a buy side inefficiency, it's getting ready to punch lows in the face. So all the people that are sitting long right now are very nervous. They are very nervous, very, very nervous. I'm not going to buy this as a double bottom, quote unquote, equal lows here until I have like very convincing evidence. Otherwise, my presumption 71 and three quarters percent. I'm 71 three quarters percent certain we're about to punch these lows. NASDAQ has been our bearish leader on the indices. I'm, I'm oh, there it is. Punch those lows. OK, can we come down and take out the 35 three quarters low? So the next low, 35 three quarters. And I want to see if we punch that. So you can see that the CME's match matching algorithms just came in. We had a sell aggressing order. It's matching with the lead market makers here. That's why you see that immediate reaction. Pauses the market for a second. Okay, now it's going to route all the uh, market making orders, all of the people that are buying up the stops. So algorithms that are buying up the stops. That is an example right there of what you just saw happen live, that's the CME's matching algorithms. The CME matching algorithms are going to match whatever aggressing sell order that was. That aggressing sell order was matched with market making, uh, market makers resting liquidity. Okay, and that is, that could be the low right there. 
That is very possible to be the law. It's it's not set in stone by any means. Um, you know, I thought it was going to head lower. I'm going to pop on two contracts here. Getting ready to get long. Okay, we are displacing now. That could be a new low right there. I got no, no inefficiency really to enter in on as of right now. No inefficiency that I can see. Okay, we that that was probably the low. That was probably the low. I, if not, we're going to punch lower again. So I'm going to leave my buy order in the market because we need to get above this buy side inefficiency right there. Yeah, need to get above this buy side inefficiency. We need to get above 43 halves plus spread. 43 halves plus spread. Need to get above that. Need to uh, really close above this uh, black candle here. Buy side inefficiency. Okay. If we close above it, that would be a very good sign that we are headed higher. I unfortunately did not squeeze out every last inch of this move. Uh, wick inefficiency right here. Okay. Gonna take my first feeler right there. This is a wick inefficiency. I am betting on the inversion of said wick inefficiency with one contract. You know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna wager two contracts on it. I'm gonna wager two contracts on this wick inefficiency inverting. This wick inefficiency inverting right here. Two contracts. I'll build this position up to four contracts maximum. I think that we're gonna head up to this buy side inefficiency right up here. I'd be looking at 058 evens. 058 evens. Okay, all all of Michael's inefficiencies can invert. This is a one minute wick inefficiency. I'm betting on it inverting. We just had sell stops taken, so we had a we had a there there we are, we're filled on one. We're filled on one. I don't know if it's gonna fill me on number two. Okay, we're filled on number two. You can see we got an immediate reaction off of that. Now I want to see a continued reaction. Want to see a close above a close above 45 three quarters. Want to see a close above that plus spread. So plus let's say a two tick three tick spread three tick spread. So I want to cover. I want to see a close above uh, 46 halves. I want to see a close at 46 halves. So that is this high plus a three tick spread. I think that was our short-term low right there. I want to see it close above 46 halves. That is this high plus a three tick spread. I want to see it close or at least trade above 46 halves. Looks like this low here might have been this low plus spread. 37 halves, 36.75. It's like 36.50. That's a one point move. It's basically this low plus a trade and a spread. So that is what that was. And we have liquidity higher, numerous places. So liquidity here and liquidity here.
both of those places will have a draw on the price. Could trade back lower through my entry. That might have not been the low. It's always possible that we punch through and make a new low. Okay. Um, I'm hoping that I can show you all an example of trading the bottom tick. Okay, not the bottom tick, but uh, bottom tick of a little retracement. Yeah, there we go. There we go. B, B, there we go right there. Okay. That's what we were looking for. Looking for impulse move up, break that, break that short-term high with confidence. So we have aggressing orders hitting the marketplace. They're currently hitting the lead market makers matching orders. A lot of aggressing orders coming in. I am not trading order flow, by the way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to take two off. Uh, we're going to take, well, I only have two on. Uh, we're just going to take one off right there, right there. So we're going to take off one plus spread. So that high is going to be 56 quarters. We're going to add on spread to that. Uh, one. Uh, let's see. That high was 56 quarters. Let's say two tick spreads. So 56 quarters. One, two. 56 quarters. One, two. There it is. That is where the sell limit's going to be. It's going to be this high plus a spread. And then we'll let the second contract run. Uh, at this point, I'm confident this is going higher. So. Okay. Going to add on one. Okay, so we obviously came into liquidity. We had a large aggressing order that matched with our lead market making orders here. Now I want to see if the market makers start exit exiting their positions. Should propel us higher. There is liquidity both at the first eye and the second eye. So first eye is going to be the first target. Second pool of liquidity, which is the second eye, is going to be the second target. So, second high comes in at 67 three quarters. Going to add in a two tick spread to that. One, two. This trade could take a while to develop. Stop is, I'm going to move it down. Stop is going to be here. I've now got price action structure in between the current price, current market price, and my stop. We closed well above my minimum threshold for wanting to long this.
Are we, we are uh, not looking at inefficiencies any lower. I mean, maybe the CE of this WIC, but that's pretty stubby. I'm not going to say that that's an inefficiency. I see no reason why this shouldn't move higher. This is an immediate rebound. This is really, I see no reason why this shouldn't move higher. If it does move lower, I'll go stop that. It's fine. If it wants to come stop me out, that's fine. I see no reason why this thing should want to move lower now. Closed above structure. Um, displaced, right? Closed above our structure here. We have liquidity higher. We have buy side inefficiencies higher. We've got a liquidity void up here. No reason why price should not want to come higher now. Although it might take some time. I don't know how long this recording is going to have to be. Could be another hour long recording. I don't know. Maybe. Okay, so why did I pick the NASDAQ? Uh, if you've been a viewer of my channel now, channel's growing. Recommend this channel to your friends. If you're interested in day trading, you've got friends, family that are interested in day trading, uh, recommend this channel. Come learn some good stuff. Uh, learn algorithmic theory with me. This is my video journaling into professional day trading. Uh, this is not real cash. Um, for SEC disclosures purposes, let me tell you that I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice. I am not licensed uh, with Series 7 or Series 66. Um, with that being said, if you're interested in learning the trading uh, methods of Michael Huddleston, uh, Inner Circle Trader, otherwise known as Algorithmic Theory, uh, subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Interact with the video. Use my affiliate links. So liquidity and inefficiency, my friend. Got liquidity higher. We do have... Um, I think this is what price is working right now. Yeah, so inverted... Uh, liquidity void here or volume imbalance. Okay. You see a look, uh, volume imbalance here. Want to see price uh, reject and move higher on this. Blue box there is highlighting an inverted um, Volume imbalance, that is a form of inefficiency. If you don't know what an inefficiency is, go watch my banner video on this YouTube channel. Want to see that invert? Want to see price move higher now? I'm trading a one minute NASDAQ chart. Uh, it, it has inefficiencies all over the place. So, it can be difficult if you're not very trained in this craft to identify them all, to identify the one that price is currently working off of. But uh, if you train this long enough, if you are give it the give it a, a professional try, um, you will see it. I mean, right there, it's volume imbalance. It's trying to invert it right now. Price, you see, comes down into it. Inefficiency right here. Um, trades higher. So also a little volume imbalance right here. So you can see we're working in between two inefficiencies. Uh, I think that our buy side liquidity is going to break the tie. Price has already worked through some sell stops here. We swept this low. It's going to work some of the sell stops. Not a full exploration of this liquidity but a partial exploration into this liquidity. So 
So if you go read any of the SEC stuff, any of the CME group stuff, they always talk about creating a more efficient marketplace, creating a quote-unquote fairer marketplace, all that good stuff. Um, it's not what you think it means. It means that every time that this market f starts running, it's a very efficient marketplace. You'll notice that over time, pretty much every price point is explored at least twice. Which, if you're not looking for this sort of thing, you wouldn't notice that necessarily, but it is true. Most all price points are explored at least twice, if not multiple times. That is supposed to create a more efficient marketplace. That's what they mean by that. Okay, we're coming back down to this volume imbalance. Again, we just dispersed higher, displaced higher, created another volume imbalance, so we're um, I'm just hanging out in a little consolidation here, I think, before another displacement higher. I think we want to go cannibalize some liquidity, my friends, and I think that we're also looking at filling back in some, uh, at least part of this buy side inefficiency up here. So we are buy side inefficient from 069 quarters up into um, 079 three quarters. So we are inefficient from point A to point B. And so that's going to be a draw on this liquidity. Uh, I'm not aiming all the way up for that. I'm just aiming at our first two liquidity targets. First liquidity target is internal. That's going to be just above 056 quarters. And I just factored in a two tick spread. Second liquidity target is 067 three quarters, factoring in two tick spread. We also have, you know, obviously more liquidity up here. This thing really starts running. It should it should just clear out this liquidity to the upside to the buy side, uh, but it's not doing that yet. But I think we're building a good case that it's about to. All right, so you're probably wondering, well, why did I pick the NASDAQ? I mean, Reese, you watch a lot of products. Why pick the NASDAQ? I'm trying to pick the products that, uh, you know, are showing us a willingness of being volatile right now. I, I want to get in the ones that are moving, that are disturbing liquidity, as they are likely to have continued disturbances of liquidity for the short term. And, you know, it could have been the Australian dollar, obviously. Australian dollar was, was an option. Um, I didn't see, I missed the Australian dollar, I'm not going to lie to you. Australian dollar was another option. Um, New Zealand dollar was another option. I missed it. Okay, I missed it. By the time that I was looking at this chart, I was already babying, I was already micromanaging this NASDAQ trade. So, you know, you could have, if you're looking for your movers, movers and shakers, uh, Australian dollar was there and New Zealand dollar was there as well. You see, you might think natural gas, but it's not the right time of day for natural gas. Natural gas is going to have most of its movement in the pre-market, some London movement, and then right in the morning, the New York morning session, so pre-market and then a.m. New York session. So this is not really the right time for natural gas to continue, continue to move. This is the right time for your Asian forex like Australia and New Zealand to move. So during during this time of the day, you can get movement here in Australia, yen, uh, and in New Zealand. So you can also get movement during this time of the day uh, in copper. Copper can also move quite a bit during this time of the day. I've even seen gold move quite a bit during this time of the day. So, you know, use a little bit of your session time knowledge for that. But I saw that the NASDAQ was moving a decent bit. So just wanted to hone in on the NASDAQ. Does it want to come and stop me out, make a new low? It's possible. I don't think so. Let's watch this NASDAQ trade play out. As long as we're really not closing below this volume imbalance here, as long as it's continuing to invert, I feel pretty good about it. Even if it does trade below it, I'm not against it.
All right. Trading back to this inverted volume balance, trading through it, coming back, making some, shaking out some of the longs. This is not the time that you want to exit your trade when it's it's unclear if price wants to make that impulse move up. You don't want to exit your trade right now. Just let it play out. You take a loss, you take a loss. We're not looking for you know, we're not looking for six point moves. We're trying to we're trying to do better than six points. So if it wants to come and stop me out, you know it is what it is. Coming out to fill this just fully fill this uh, bissy. Yeah, this could absolutely come and stop me up. I I don't see the reason why this is not moving higher. I'm not seeing it. I don't see a one minute inefficiency that it's going to be drawn to. Could be drawn just back to the same liquidity pool that we have on the sell side. You know, looking looking at our intermarket relationships, it's probably because the dollar index is moving higher. But dollar index is coming to a liquidity target where it might have some, some sort of a downside reaction. That's why you have to reference your intermarket relationships, see if price is doing something you don't expect, go check out your dollar index. That's why the NASDAQ has not moved higher yet. But I don't want to be shaken out of this trade prematurely. I'm listening to some music on my headphones because obviously copyright and all that bullshit. That nonsense. I, I'm a licensed attorney and I don't agree with copyright. I think it stifles creativity. copyright. I think it's a way to snuff out the competition. And people will say, well, won't all your bullshit be, won't all your music and art be stolen by China and Chinese people? Well, number one, they steal all the patents in China anyways. So that's not really, you know, stopping that. And number two, artificial intelligence. AI is just going to copy everything anyways. So music artistry is going to be dead. Stock futures are already automated, as you know. We live in the age of algorithms. Humans are becoming rapidly redundant. We're all going to be snuffed out by computers. A good thing and a bad thing. If you have the cunning, the intelligence, the drive to use the artificial intelligence to your advantage, like in trading, you're going to do very well. It gives you the opportunity to live your life that you, you would have been stuck in the factory all day or in the coal mine back in the day. 
or I'd be stuck in an office right now writing briefs that I don't want to do. Um, all right, let's check out this NASDAQ. I do like the way that the bodies respected this BISI. Um, I like that we traded back through the volume, this volume imbalance. I now want to see that same volume imbalance invert. You know, one of the things I've kind of noticed about the trading community is that everybody kind of treats it like a big kumbaya, and it's not. It's, it's really fucking hard. And uh, ain't nobody give a shit about you, believe me. This is a blood sport. This is not kumbaya. This is, especially in these markets that we're in now, this is not kumbaya, my friends. This is uh, kill or be killed. All right, looks like we might be stopped out on this, which is really unbelievable to me that it wouldn't want to come up and explore this liquidity. I still have no real reason to believe that it's going to shoot lower other than, okay, you know, we only swept the sell side liquidity. We, we didn't really go fully explore that liquidity pool. You notice that my stop is well before the low. Um, I'm really not interested in this long if we start trading lower than this because I mean, there's no real inefficiency lower that price would be attracted to. It would be attracted to the same sell side liquidity pool that it was before. Let's check out our dollar index. Yeah, so you see why the NASDAQ is sitting in a consolidation right this very second? It is because the dollar index uh, was made a move up to liquidity here. So the dollar index is coming into a buy side liquidity pool here. And you can see that it, it's um, forming a three drives pattern, stepping up. It's probably about to turn lower. I would say short term about to turn lower and that should free up the Nasdaq to move higher if the dollar index can start moving lower while I've been recording this video and you've been watching it uh, or in reality you haven't been watching it um, because you have the attention span of a squirrel you just want to ask me 20 questions about if I trade BTC and what is a fair value gap instead of watching a full length video I know how you work because that's how I work until I really wanted to make this thing, until I really wanted to be a professional day trader, I, I wouldn't have watched a fraction of this video. You gotta really wanna be a professional day trader to listen to me bullshit. And yammer. Du willst eigentlich ein Professional werden, um zu, uh, um zu mich alle diese Zeit zu hören. Ты, ты uh, без сомнения хочешь uh, стать профессиональным трейдером, чтобы, чтобы слышать uh, с его, моего uh, бессмысленного, uh, я не знаю, речь, бессмысленный речь, речь, бессмысленный речи, я бы сказал. Так что я всегда наблюдаю 
dollar index это это влияет на все это влияет на все других остальных эм, рынках да, рынка рынки рынки доллар влияет на все на всех других рынках я думаю, что это правило, но не так знаю. Так что, как долго, как доллар индекс, э, как бы, как бы растет, как долго NASDAQ э, будет в этой консолидации, э, ей weiter, dass der Dollar höher geht, desto mehr in, in dieser Zone bleibt äh, unsere Position, unsere Nasdaq. Um, okay, so you all wanted to see live trading. Вы все хотите наблюдать трейдинг в прямой эфире и сейчас вы все видите как это э, как это правильно выглядит э, и я але я але зи але зи але волен trading um, in, uh, in these uh, what am I saying? Jena I have not my Deutsch seit sehr lange benutzt so I have alles vergessen I must now auf um, auf meinem Wörterbuch Saying. Sie wollen alle äh, Trading in einer in einer gegenwärtigen gegenwärtigen Sinne derzeitig derzeitig Sinn sehen und jetzt gibt es in einer der in einer derzeitigen Sinne live so okay Uh, dollar index is still moving higher. Höhere geht. Restiert. Um, so as long as the dollar index is moving and pumping like that, the NASDAQ is going to sit here and bullshit and just efficiently trade. So as long as the dollar index is pumping like this, um, and rather than just using some bullshit retail telegram language let's um let's actually examine price here on the dollar index coming up to a little uh, buy side inefficiency here trading into a buy side liquidity pool um, it should want to turn lower find resistance anywhere from here up into uh, 102 spot 614 you know if we're looking even higher than that in, for a turn 102 spot 620 is the 25 percent of this order block 102 spot 625 would be a decent place for the dollar index to turn and head back lower. Um, any one of these spots would be a decent place for a reasonable place for the dollar index to start to turn. Um, the NASDAQ is going to sit here and bullshit as long as the dollar index is, you know, as long as the dollar index continues to move higher, uh, continues to work this buy side liquidity 
move up into that buy side inefficiency or that buy side order block, then you know the Nas the Nasdaq is is not going to want to diverge from the dollar index too much. So we're watching the dollar index at all times. Dollar index is getting ready to turn, and I think the Nasdaq is getting ready to make the move. I'm going to step away from the screen. Um, but you know, here here's the thing that you'll have to remember, right? Wyckoff, Richard Wyckoff is dead, and so are his ideas. And many of you are going to see what the NASDAQ just did there as accumulation. And is it? Kind of. But it's also kind of not. It's, it's waiting to see what the dollar index is going to do. Is the NASDAQ always very strongly correlated with the dollar index? No, but it's always a, at least a moderate to weak correlation. So the NASDAQ is sitting there efficiently trading. The trading algorithms are just keeping us, keeping us efficient, waiting to see, waiting to get the cue from the dollar index. When the dollar index you know, just starts slowing down its velocity, when the dollar index reach, reaches its buy side objective, that's really the green light for the NASDAQ to start moving higher. Is this quote unquote accumulation? It is kind of accumulation, but to be hyper accurate, it's it's a it's efficient trading pending dollar index. There you go. There's your hyper accuracy. It's is it really accumulation in that white coffee and bullshit sense? No. Kind of, but no. So sometimes you're going to watch Wyckoff stuff and Wyckoff based stuff and it's going to look similar to what I'm doing but it's not Wyckoff
Okay, uh, well, let's check out the dollar index. Is it turning lower yet? It's thinking about it. Yeah, it's thinking about turning lower at this inefficiency. It's thinking, it's pondering. You know, um, a lot of you want to see live trading. This is it. This video could be over two hours long. I don't know. At this point, I'm going to move the stop up here. I don't really want to see. Do I want to take a loss after waiting all this time? No, I do not. But it is what it is. I'm essentially risking open profit to make it to the liquidity targets. And that is something that in your day trading you will have to do. It's not an option. Okay, had another volume imbalance here. It's trying to invert. Never put your stop in an inefficiency. Never. Liquidity is okay. Could put the stop all the way down here, but at that point the trade idea would be pretty, in my opinion, invalid. So, balance price range right here, where the cursor is. So, it is pending dollar index. Pending dollar index. This whole video could end up being uh, just watching me take, you know what, I'm not going to take a loss on this trade. Uh, I'm going to move the stop up into right there. I don't, I just I don't have the stomach to, to watch it come all the way back and, and put me out for a loss. So if this is going to be a break even trade, then it is what it is. I put it up at one point of profit. We're currently sitting up four points of profit. I'm going to put the stop at one point of profit. And this whole video could just be watching me make one point of profit. I hope it's not. Five minute chart. You can see we thoroughly explored that one minute volume imbalance that we had. We had another one minute. At, it's even visible here on the five minute. But at this point, yeah, it looks like it is going to want to come and shoot lower back to the sell side liquidity. So this is probably going to be a scratch. And I'm, you know, sad about that. But at this point, I don't want to take a loss on this trade. I just don't have the stomach for it. And then we'll try again. Uh, get stopped out, see if it comes all the way back lower, probably get long again. I do not have the stomach to let this thing come back. Uh, Alright, we were stopped out. That was one point of profit. It was a lot of work for one point of profit. But at this point, I just don't have the stomach to let it come all the way back. So if it wants to shoot all the way back lower, come and explore this um, sell side liquidity. I'm going to pull these orders. I'm going to pull the eyes. It is going to shoot down to this sell side liquidity. I'm of that opinion now. So, the this volume imbalance I had in this box, going to get short there. Well, yeah, all right. I think we are going to shoot lower, right back to where we were. Don't want to rush into it. Just waiting to see what we're doing here. Got we've got a lot of price action above now. The dollar index has not stopped moving higher, which is going to start smothering our risk assets. So. I don't really want this runtime of this video to be two hours long, but it might be.
Didn't take a loss on that trade. That was a one tick profit. Had a little bit of a displacement lower, working in between these old inefficiencies. Okay, at this point, I am thinking short. I am thinking short. We're gonna we're gonna gamble on a short here. I think he's probably gonna want to come and shoot below thirty-five. Okay, we're filled one short, we're filled three short. Okay. We're at a quarter spread, gonna be by three limit there plus spread. Okay. Five minute chart. You can see that we came up to this, rejected it. If the dollar index is wanting to take out buy side liquidity, and it's it's going to start smothering all of your risk assets. So we take a look at the dollar index. We've got buy side liquidity up higher. Um, let me check out something else. DX. This is our uh, dollar index futures, not the CFD. 30 minute chart, let's check out the hourly. Balance price range, buy side inefficiency sitting up to 102 spot 355. Buy side liquidity above that. Yeah, I think it's probably um, gonna start smothering things. DX came down to this. And we're looking at buy side liquidity right there. So it uh, would appear that the DX wants to go higher. Let's go back to our CFD. Yeah, okay. Check back out on our NASDAQ one minute chart. At this point, the dollar and so the dollar index is starting to smother everything. Um, and I think we're going to shoot lower now on the Nasdaq. Might be pretty quick. We've got a lot of price action above balanced price action, balanced price range. If you are watching this day trading and you think that this is revenge trading or I'm quote unquote, you know, I'm constantly reversing in the market. I'm not. I stuck with that long idea until I really thought that it was invalid. Uh, and now I'm firmly of the opinion that, that we are going lower. I waited for that price action to develop. Um, I did tell you that we still had sell side down here that we had not explored. And sometimes it wants to sweep it and move a lot higher. Sometimes it's going to want to sweep it move up into an inefficiency and then come fully explore the liquidity and so that is my current thinking so 10 minute chart on the Nasdaq and we see that we're gonna have uh, below this wick here that that wick of 35 three quarters that is going to have plenty of sell side liquidity on it so I'm gonna uh, reverse the eye here I'm gonna put our eye down here change the eye color to let's do a purple eye. I'm not taking revenge on the market. I'm not uh, constantly reversing my thoughts, waiting for the price action to develop and and really change my opinion. You know, we came up, we efficiently traded. It was pending dollar index. Now that it does look like the dollar index. Um, is going to start smothering all of our risk assets. You can see that across the board we're starting to turn down on all of our Forex products. Um, 
the bonds are starting to tick up, which they tend to move in a you know somewhat positive correlation with the dollar index, not super tight. Uh, ES is turning lower, Dow is lower, Russell's lower. Yen futures are generally, you know, they sometimes move against the dollar, sometimes with the dollar. Risk assets like Australian and New Zealand are lower. So I think we're going to come explore this sell side liquidity. And if you're wondering in your day trading if this is the kind of precision that you need, if you need to be able to sometimes change your opinion, you know, on the fly, the answer is yes. Doesn't mean you want to be clicking the reverse button all the time. You don't. I only I only changed my position here because I really waited for waited for this to develop. I thought we were going to shoot into our buy side inefficiencies and our buy side liquidity. No more. No more. Now I'm thinking we're coming down below this low here at 35.75. I essentially put my buy limit one tick below that, which would factor in the spread. And it could even come down lower than that. I'm going to be honest with you. All right, I'm actually going to try and squeeze out more of this. Change that to two. So the dollar index is still moving higher, and that is that is going to start smothering all of our risk assets. So let us watch the NASDAQ taking two off at the first liquidity point. Could want to come. Boy, this is tough. How low does this thing want to go? Wick inefficiency there that could invert. I'm going to put 115. Third contract is going to come off at 115.75 plus spread, plus 50. So two tick spread. Let's do a two tick spread. One, two, right there. That would be worth third contract. That is what I'm thinking. Let's clone that. Second I is down here. And stop is going to go one point into profit now. Do I want to take two scratches on all of this video? No. I do not, but I don't want to take a loss on this short either at this point, so that's just kind of, you know, my way of not taking a loss, but at one point into profit, it's a hundred bucks, whatever it is. One point is 20 bucks, three contracts, 60 bucks, minus commissions, so it's basically a scratch, but it's not a loss.
Um, I do have a video on using classifying your highs and lows by session. And if you are keen eye, you will see that this is our Tuesday, 27th of June. That's yesterday's, that is a, a PM short term low. So we know that there's going to be regular trading hours liquidity that held over the resettlement. It's going to be there. That is a New York PM, excuse me, New York lunch short term low. New York lunch short term low. Remember that we view the lunch hour as 90 minutes. So the lunch hour goes until uh, 1330. So this is a New York lunch short term low. There will be liquidity below that regular trading hours liquidity. The dollar index continues to, you see it's starting to smother everything. I've talked about this. When the dollar index is chopping up and down, uh, you're going to see divergences in the marketplace. You're going to see some things going up, some things going down. When king dollar is directional, everything's smothered. So king dollar starts running on you, all of your risk assets are, are liable to move lower. And so it kind of makes it a, an easier marketplace to see if the dollar index is smothering everything. Now, the only reason that it's not smothering natural gas so much is because this is just not the session when natural gas is even going to trade at all. It is smothering crude oil a little bit, even though this is way outside of when crude oil's, crude oil's active hours are. You see it's very much smothering uh, the markets that are active right now. New Zealand is smothered. Australia is smothered. Um, the Japanese yen is generally considered a flight to safety as well, and so you won't always see the dollar when the dollar is moving higher. Sometimes the yen will be in a consolidation or it will uh, you know, be moving alongside the dollar. It is generally considered a safe haven asset. How strong that correlation is, it's a very weak correlation. When the dollar index is really gearing up to be directional, the yen will usually also move lower. So something to work work through with the yen is it can be more of a more of a positive relationship with the dollar, but that you know it's it's considered a safe haven asset. But when king dollar is is just blasting, um, yen is going to be smothered as well. All right, my friends. I think we're about to punch through that low right there and take our first two contracts off. I'm not going to move the stop because, as you know, I'm not moving my stop into an inefficiency. You never want your stop to be in an, in an inefficiency. So the stop is not moved. In fact, it's slightly suboptimal right now. It should be right there. It's three ticks. You do not want to put your stop in here. That is an inefficient price delivery. You do not want to put your stop in here. That is an inefficient price delivery. Price could always come back into the inefficiency and turn lower again. It's always liable to do that. And so if you're ever wondering about stop placement, it just can't be in an inefficiency. Can be in liquidity, cannot be in, cannot be in inefficiency. Under no circumstances should your stop placement be in an inefficient price delivery. Price is always liable to curl back to that inefficiency and then continue to move. So if you were really aggressive with the trailed stop there and you put it in that buy side inefficiency we just formed, you just got stopped out. That's just something you have to be aware of. At this point, I would say punching through our sell side liquidity here is about an 83.9% chance. I'm going to say 83.9% chance we get filled on this buy limit. I'm going to take two off. I'm going to put that at So everybody who's sitting long right now uh, is, you know, is sweating right now, sweating big time because their stop is 
uh, you know, it's thinking about being hit. I do not want to be stopped out on this trade, uh, but, you know, it can do it. At which point I'll probably take a break from trading. I don't want to video record two scratches, but if I'm video recording two scratches, it is what it is. You can see what real day trading is like. Sometimes you're going to scratch a lot. You can't, listen, I understand that many of you are probably thinking, well, Reese, why don't you take your profit? Because when price was doing all this, it, you know, and the dollar index could have been turning lower, I'm, you know, I'm going to risk $300 of open profit to make $1,500 of open profit. I'm okay with that. And as a day trader trying to get professional, you can't, you know, it's a balancing act like everything. You can't scalp every trade that could turn into a nice trade. If you do, you're, you're missing out on a lot of profit. And that's just something that you can't afford to do. So you learn to take scratches, um, wash trades. You just learn. You, you learn to accept your break-even trades. Um, now, if I break even on this trade, I'm, I'm just taking a break. Uh, regardless of what the market does, I'm taking it. I'm taking at least a 30-minute break, and and uh, waiting to get back in the marketplace. Come back with a fresh mind in you know hour or so. I don't like taking scratches, break-even trades. Better than a loss, but frustrating to feel like the work that you've put in hasn't gone anywhere. But you have to do it. There's no choice. So I warned you that you can't put the stop in an inefficiency. You just can't. I just put my stop three ticks into a break even. I wasn't going to move it lower because, again, this thing could turn on an inefficiency. It's very surprising to me that through all this work, the NASDAQ does not want to punch into this sell side liquidity. Uh, just very surprising to me that it doesn't want to do that. You know, if you're watching this channel and you know you just want to see me make a bunch of money first off this is top step trading this is not real dollars but second that's not the point you're learning what a professional day trading mindset what professional day trading looks like and this is it it's a lot of getting ideas in the marketplace it's a lot of getting ideas of what you think price is about to do and waiting until you're proven wrong I might try and short it one more time if it goes through my stop, but I would at least want to wait. And you're probably thinking to yourself, well, Reese, you blew out nine points of open profit. Yeah, I was trying to make more than that. What can I tell you? Okay, this is going to be commissions. I told you that price can always curl back into an inefficiency. It's always liable to do that no matter how strongly you think the drawn liquidity is. And I firmly believe that the NASDAQ is... is yeah, at this point, I think... I, how does it not want to punch through this sell side liquidity? 
But the liquidity points come second, inefficiency comes first. And obviously you can see the algorithm wanted to come back and re-deliver these um, buy side inefficiencies immediately, which it did. And okay, we're looking at two scratches. Recover, delete these. Check out our dollar index. Yeah, there you go. See, dollar index started to move lower just a bit, so the NASDAQ is pending. It's still pending dollar. Came right back up to that same inefficiency that we've been trading. I will get short again. Follow this idea on the NASDAQ. If I see it break some structure lower, just wait. Just wait on it. You're probably thinking to yourself right now, well, Reese, isn't this a classic? Isn't this a classic trading range? Yeah, go try and trade that yourself, pal. See how the how trying to trade a trading range like this works for you. It'll be out of your range before you can make any sort of profit. It's not classic. What 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 the Nasdaq is doing right this very second is it's pending dollar index. If I need to cut to the chase, it's just pending to wait to see what the dollar index is going to do. It's, it's moving in a very strong correlation with the dollar index inversely. So we see a little bit of a movement down on the dollar index and you can see the NASDAQ just pops off, right? That, that's, that's how it's working right now. And it gave itself some inefficiencies to reference later. And, um, you know, you might be thinking to yourself, well, Hmm. This I, I don't know what to tell you folks. It's not always easy. You follow your rules, inefficiencies and liquidity. All right. At this point, my original original idea. Okay, this is back in play, and the eyes are going back to the upside, and it's doing it without me. And yeah, is that frustrating? very frustrating but I'm not gonna chase it all right we're gonna get long if you have a volume imbalance here we got a busy here Let's see 25 percent retracement of our current little move up all right I'm trying to get long right there Let's see, plus a three tick spread. One, two, three. Let's try it. If it comes back and fills me, I doubt it will. It, it's looking like it's going to run without me. And you know what? This sucks. It sucks a lot. I see the dollar index is starting to turn lower right about where I told you that it would, but I had no, you know, I didn't take losses, so it is what it is. It took scratches. Scratches, break-even trades are better than losses. You can see that we... I'll tell you what I started out the night on. Started the night at 154 338 So this is a very difficult $300. Started at 154 338 currently sitting at 154.695 has been a very difficult $300. NASDAQ has been pending dollar index for some time now. Okay, we are going to use any excuse now to get to get long. Uh, long at the market? No, I'm not doing that. I am not doing that. I'm going to try and enter in on an inefficiency. 
about right there. I'm not going to get long at the market. I know that Michael Huddleston might do it. I'm not doing it. I, I'll just let this thing run 20 points against me. I without me, it's fine. I'm not. I'm not getting long at the market. Not doing it. I'm going to try and enter in on an inefficiency. And these are one-minute inefficiencies, by the way. So, if you're still of the rudimentary opinion that you can't trade a one-minute chart, it's just false. One-minute inefficiency here. Yeah, this is probably going to be a breakaway inefficiency. Immediate rebalance there. I'm not getting long at the market. Not doing it. We're probably about to get big, fat green candles, and I'm pissed. I didn't want to let to see, see that long run all the way against me, and that's exactly what it did to the letter. But this thing could have punched through those lows easily. All right. Try and get long on the 50% of that order block. Not getting long at the market. Not doing it. Period. Won't do it. 50% of this order block. Or black candle. It's not an order block. Black candle. That is as high as I will go. It's got to retrace for me. Will not get long at the market. Another inefficiency right there. That's that's awful steep to be getting long. Okay, um, sell side inefficiency right there. Want to see how price reacts right there? I'm going to delete the red box and this blue box. I want to see. It could be a short there at 62 halves. That could be a short if we see price react the way that we want to. Inefficiency comes first. Liquidity comes second. Check out our five minute chart. Oh, this is frustrating. Very frustrating. I'm not getting long at the market. At any point, this thing could be in this buy side inefficiency and just pop lower. That's as much certainty as I have. It is drawn to liquidity. It is drawn to inefficiencies. It uses inefficiencies as dynamic support and resistance, and that can get you very, very far. But it doesn't get you all the way there to perfection. It gets you gets you a lot further than all your other systems though. Okay, I want to see a retracement on this buy side liquidity, buy side inefficiency. See if we can come lower to get long. And if we see that price comes up to this inefficiency, it might get short. Well, hold on. 
This is a bad long. This is a bad long. I'm not long on this. Uh-uh. No. Won't do it. Okay. We're also putting the eye down here. I'm 50-50 now. Okay. We go to our toolbox. Buy set inefficient there. All right, let's say the dollar index. Yeah, 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 there it is. Okay, ooh, there's an old inefficiency. Yeah, right there, let's see if we wanna invert that, probably not. Oh man, is this frustrating? Yes. Did we give up? No. It's been a very difficult three hundred dollars. Now, very difficult three hundred dollars. Let me see what my top step trader profit target on the day is. One fifty seven nine thirty eight. Okay, coming up to a buy side inefficiency here. We did get an initial reaction off of price. You can see right there. And, okay, initial reaction is good. It's a good initial reaction. It's a very good initial reaction. We're going to try a short. At uh, 6350. Uh, let's add on um, Two ticks of spread, so 64. Now, so one tick of spread. That was a good initial reaction off that inefficiency. So the second push up, it might want to turn back lower. All right, we are short. The stop is going to be pretty tight on this. Stop is going to be right there. Okay, I don't want to see this inefficiency get inverted, and that's exactly what it did immediately. We're probably, you know, this is probably going to be a loss. I put my stop there because if it's if it's going to stop me out at 6625 it's definitely running this buy side liquidity. And that is the best that I can tell you at this current moment. This is almost certainly going to stop me out. Almost certainly going to stop me out. Stop me out one. Got stopped out partially.
Okay, two ticks higher then. We got stopped out one. That was the top tick up there on that rejection block. Thus far. If we, if we run this short-term high we just made, we're almost certainly running buy-side liquidity. So, almost certainly making it to purple eye. I am short too. I was stopped at one. Stopped at one. Stopped out partially. And you're probably thinking, well, Reese, why didn't you put your stop higher? At that very point in time, I have really no fucking idea if it's going to run the buy side liquidity. How am I supposed to know that? It, that's, we've talked about this before. The priority is inefficiency, but the liquidity is there. And we're going to probably add on a third contract short here. Okay. Let's check our dollar index. Curling back up. Check our hourly dollar index. Difficult for me to say right now because if this thing turns higher, coming up into this buy side inefficiency. Let's check the check our position. It's not going to stay in this dealing range forever, my friends. It is going to come down and, and shoot through liquidity at some point. Товарищи, это будет, это будет. Okay, our recording is coming up on an hour and a half. I don't know how long I want to put this recording. If this is to be our high, then it should come back down and shoot now shoot through this sell side liquidity with three lows on it. If this is not our high, then we are looking... If this is not our high right here that we just formed, then we're looking up in these buy side inefficiencies. So... It's a very tight game that I'm playing right now. It's either going to be a nice um, over 20 point trade or a small loss. Got a displacement lower. Did not take out the low that took us to our high. This does not appear to me. First inclination, this is probably not our high. Probably wants to move higher. But I got short here uh, on our wick inefficiency. Got short just above this inefficiency. So this would be a premium wick inefficiency. Um, if this is our dealing range that we're going to stay in, we're going to act on, then we would be in a deep premium right now, and it would want to come lower. Now that being said, if our dealing range is actually much higher, then then this is still, you know, not premium. So again, if you're using Michael's concepts, it takes a lot of work, my friends, to get there, to to learn these concepts dynamically. Easy to watch his videos, difficult to learn how to apply them while the price chart is moving. You know, it is possible, difficult.
Okay. All right. Inefficiency there. Bang. Okay, we are going to add on a contract short. And we're going to do it, um, let's see, right here, right here. Let's do it right there at uh, 50 plus spread. So we're going to add on a tick of spread onto that. I mean, I want to be a freak at day trading, so this is why you're tr you're seeing me uh, add on spread to these entries. That's why you're seeing me use the Fibonacci tool. I really want to be the actual top tick. I mean, I'm not lying to you. I want I want to be the actual top tick. Am I am I quite there yet? Usually not. But that's what I'm going for. I want to be the top tick on my shorts. That's how it is. I'm looking to be a freak. I'm just looking to be a freak of nature at day trading. It's going to be a long time before I'm there. But that's what I want. I want to be a freak at day trading. Just just an aberration. It just fits my personality, fits my genetic disposition to want to do this on a freakish level. And I believe it can be done. Difficult. Possible. You know, I literally got stopped out one of my three contracts. Uh, I was short originally three. I got stopped out one. Did not fully, did not fully engage my stop. But that's pretty wild. Okay, check out our dollar index. Dollar index is still kind of ticking lower. Makes me think, you know, coming into some buy side inefficiencies here on the dollar index. Many of you might be thinking to yourself, well, is it always the NASDAQ that you're going to pick as your instrument to trade? A lot of times the NASDAQ is giving you the most movement, but not always. Not always. You know, the other options you could have traded tonight would have been the Australian and the New Zealand. The, uh, both beautiful options that I just wasn't seeing. Um, wouldn't have start, you know, this was, this was a difficult move to catch, I think. Well... See where our resettlement was. It's right there. It's basically, yeah, just shot straight down after resettlement, right? <laughs> and that would be difficult. It'd be difficult to see that the New Zealand was about to do that, in my opinion. Possible, difficult. The NASDAQ, right off of resettlement, had already shown some movement, so that's why I chose the NASDAQ. Is it always going to be the NASDAQ? No. You'll see me trade other instruments. Not at random, though. I'm looking for instruments that are moving. I'm looking for bullish leaders and laggards. I'm looking for you know instruments that have recently disturbed liquidity. A lot of times it is going to be the NASDAQ, but not always. Not always. Spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, round, round. Не всегда, мои друзья. А вы все ожидаете, что это каждый раз будет in queue. Но не так. Need that because it is. As, 
es wird nicht äh, jedes Mal das NQ äh, sein. Consequent encroachment of that wick. In the window, so I look into the room. Makes me so depressed to see the girl. There's not a soul out there. No one to hear my prayer. Plus one tick. The one tick. Consequent encroachment of that wick. Plus a tick. The midnight walk, somebody help me chase the shadows away. Give me, give me, give me a man at the midnight. Take me through the darkness, through the brick of the day. Consequent encroachment of that wick inversion, plus one tick for the spread. Spread is currently two ticks. I put my order in one tick above the CE of that wick. I think I can get filled on that. I want one more tick. Okay, we're filled on contract number three. Open the window. Okay, we're now two ticks above the consequent occurrence for that wick. Coming back into this buy side inefficiency. This is looking like it's going to be a high resistance run, a high resistance liquidity run lower. Do I still think this thing could come all the way up and stop me out? Of course I do. That was just a glitch, okay? Stop. You know, oftentimes, even if you're trying to trade to be the top tick, it's probably going to put me into drawdown. It's probably going to come up into this same. It's been bouncing around the inefficiencies tonight, so if it continues that um, trend, it's probably thinking about red box. That's this. If you're wondering what the red box is, it is the separation between these two candles. And I'm looking for that price to come up. What I want to see happen is I want to see price to come up to that red box, turn lower. I added on. Okay, you see I added on. Um, yeah, okay, I'm short three. I don't know. Yeah, we'll look at the executions later. Came up to this buy side inefficiency plus spread. Okay, we're back up in the red box, trading through the red box. Is this going to come all the way up and stop me out? It's possible. We did uh, get a one minute close above that red box, which is not a good sign. Efficiency in the yellow box. I 
and we're working in between two inefficiencies right now. The short side inefficiency is right here. Buy side inefficiency is in the circle red box. Uh, sell side inefficiency is in the yellow box. Currently working in between those two boxes. At some point, okay, this recording is getting on way too long, but I'll leave it going. Do I want to upload a three hour long video? No. It's going to be a long upload time. But will I do it for my YouTube audience? Maybe. Probably not. You irritate me. Well, what is a fair value gap? Do you trade BTC? This is why I can't live stream, folks. You're going to ask me 30 times, do you trade BTC? Yeah, but do you trade BTC? I'm going to make this very clear. No. Watching me on the rain, the spars and the flame. Like a fire in my blood, like a fire in my ah ah. All right. Is this thing going to come stop me out? It's looking like it. Yeah, because we invert the red box. Go shoot through buy side liquidity. Go shoot through buy side liquidity. Come up into these buy side inefficiencies here. It is 100%, 100,000% possible now at this point um, that we do that. Now you see we just gapped right on up on that one minute candle. So it is looking like it's going to be a loss. This is the maximum number of contracts here. I'm willing to add on. I'm just going to let it be stopped up. Look, one thing about your stop placement is you put your stop up here. It, This thing, there's no point in putting the stop up in liquidity up here because let me tell you something. If it's if it's turning higher, if it's going to do this, it's going way higher. It, it's not going to do one tick. It's not going to sweep this high if it goes higher. If this thing is moving higher, it's moving way higher. It's, it's moving up into our buy side inefficiencies up here. So it's not... It's not even why why waste the money. It's just wasting money. Uh, you don't want to. I'm not going to put my stop up here in liquidity when if if this is going to be a push into liquidity, I think it's going to run it. I don't think it's going to sweep it, and I can always get short again. So I'm not going to put my stop uh, up here in liquidity where price might be drawing and about to go attack. Because if it is about to go attack this buy side liquidity and not turn lower right now it, it's popping through another 20 points 10 points and I'm I'm not letting that you know run that far against me I would be looking for short opportunities again so looking higher we have this up here 50 percent 76 spot 50 that would be a short idea okay five minute chart looking at 76.50 for our buy side inefficiency. There is one lower. I think we just trade right through that. At this point, I think my trade is almost certainly going to be stopped out.
Okay. We're stopped out. We are uh, sitting at a loss on the day now. Okay. Now you watch why I put my stop there. Watch. It's not going to turn back lower right now. This thing's pumping through. Do I like longing at the market? Uh, no. But this thing is almost certainly popping off. So, with that being said, got a push into liquidity coming. Almost certainly. And let's see, 7650. That is going to be the target plus one tick spread. Same for that. Mr. Saxo Beat, make me this, brings me up, brings me down, it's me. Saxo Beat, this brings me up, brings me down. Okay, we are buy side inefficient here, up into 76 uh, three quarters. I don't think this is going to be a sweep turn lower. I 100% could be wrong on that. We need to get short again. <laughs> oh, man, that was suck. Uh... I don't think this is going to be a sweep. I think this is going to turn back higher. I'm not taking revenge on the market. I'm watching our inefficiencies and liquidity. We traded, we swept buy side liquidity here. I think it's going to run it further. Go, uh, go up into our buy side inefficiencies here on the left. 15 minute chart. You see we are buy side inefficient in this area. We want to see the dollar index turning lower, uh, which we are, which is, uh, you know, good thing. Dollar index moving lower, going to allow the NASDAQ to move higher if it wants to. So we have a green light from the dollar index for the NASDAQ to move higher. Are we really just going to sweep this high? That's not the result that I foresaw happening. Your inefficiency right there. Okay, want to see that inefficiency invert, move higher.
We just uh, ran our Tokyo Open high. So Asian session high was just swept. Sorry, excuse me, swept, not ran, just so swept. So we're just you know, seeking destroying here, just taking out internal liquidity. Want to see this inefficiency invert move higher? You know, keeping up with uh, what the NASDAQ's doing real time, even during the overnight session, uh, is difficult. Want to see the yellow box uh, service support to move higher? And if we trade below the yellow box at this point, I don't want it. Is there an efficiency right there? Allow it to trade. I would allow it to trade, you know, back to the yellow box. I don't really want to see it trade there, right? Right there. I'm squeezing. Oh, it goes around the world. Just la 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 la. All around the world, just la 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 la. This is the payback. This is the payback. All right, we are currently sitting at a small profit on the session. Want to see this thing push through the liquidity into our buy side inefficiency. All right, I'm taking a break if I lose this one. I yeah, I didn't see the overall picture here. I guess just seek and destroy, take out our internal liquidity, move lower. Um. All right, looks like we are just going to sweep this high, turn back lower. The stop is where it is because I, I want to see this uh, fair value gap in this volume imbalance invert to turn us higher. And if it does not do that, then I'm not interested. If we are just looking at a seek and destroy profile here, we're coming all the way back down. And if we don't turn, okay, we are looking at a seek and destroy profile. <laughs> all right, we're going to try and get short. <laughs> this is frustrating. Uh, we're now at a $200 loss on the session.
Okay, that same volume imbalance, that same inefficiency. I thought we were going to run that high, not just sweep it. Now that we did just sweep it, well, probably going to sweep this. Probably going to run the sell side, coming all the way back down. Yeah, we're probably coming all the way back down. Coming up on New York midnight. Trying to enter in on this inefficiency, inverted. All right, I'm up in this to four contracts. I'm pretty confident this is going to be a seek and destroy profile, and we are coming lower. Stop is going to be up above that high. Far away, I know. Because what it looks like this is doing is just an internal sort of seek and destroy profile. Do a whole lot of movement for a whole lot of nothing. Just, just go out, sweep our buy side liquidity. So really build up the sell side liquidity here. Sweep the buy side liquidity, just kind of tap into it, and then uh, come and run our sell side. We did just close, so we had it's almost a model 2022 right here. This entry that I have, why? Well, we have buy stops taken, uh, we closed below the low that took us to the high, we just closed below it, and with a fair value gap formed. Uh, we also have an inverted volume imbalance there. And so um, this is pretty much a model 2022. Shoot for uh, sell, sell side liquidity. We're going to up this to three and let one run. And, you know, as you can see with day trading, sometimes it takes a few tries before you really get a feeling for what the market's doing. And I'm applying every concept that I'm aware of, which I'm aware. I am picking a, an instrument that has already shown a willingness to go lower, which is the NASDAQ. I'm watching our intermarket relationship here, watching the dollar index, um, applying applying uh, Michael's uh, market maker profile. So this is a seek and destroy profile. Looking at our session highs and lows, looking at our liquidity. There's really nothing more I can do. This is This is applying everything of which I'm aware.
All right, bouncing around all around town, around my entry. If I'm wrong again, then it definitely is probably break time. Because <laughs> this, this is very much looking like a seek and destroy profile. Uh, lots of liquidity would have built up by this point with three lows down here, triple bottom. Uh, this is retail retail haven down here. It's going to be loads and loads and loads of the stops down here that price is going to be interested in. So if price does, if, if all of my analysis here, seek and destroy profile, sweep of the internal liquidity being our Asian session high, uh, triple bottom retail, uh, retail stops are going to be down here. If, if this short is not on the money, then it's break time because this short should be on the money. I'm just going to tell you this, this short should, should be it. All right, I'm back. Hello. Video is going over two hours long now. Almost certainly no one on this earth has watched the full length of this video. It's going to be a while to let this thing upload. Holy moly. Okay, let's go down to our one minute chart. 
can see that we are inefficient here in the yellow box. I want to see that invert come back lower. Yeah, if this is not the short, I don't know what the fuck is, because this is buy stops taken. This is this is the the high the low that took you to the high on the one minute chart is uh, we broke that we have an inefficiency that price is inverting if this is not going to shoot down to sell side liquidity I don't know what the fuck will so this should be it Now I'm kind of pissed off, so I'm not fucking aiming for these lows. I'm aiming, I'm aiming for that sell side liquidity. I'm not pulling this thing either. I'm going for a full pull and runner. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking for like, yeah, looking for almost 30 points on this. I'm looking for our sell side liquidity here during Asian session. We ran internal liquidity, we ran Asian session high. I'm looking for it to come run Asian session low. Also looking for it to take out this uh, Tuesday, Tuesday New York lunch low. All this is going to be just sell side liquidity city. I mean, this is going to be. This is going to be liquidity town down here. Just liquidity metropolis. This is the Tokyo, Japan of liquidity down here. I mean, this is California Gold Rush down here, baby. What is this? This is California Gold Rush. That is the biggest fucking bullseye. Look at this bullseye down here. We got New York regular trading hours liquidity we got we got multiple Asian session lows for our electronic trading hours so we're looking at we're looking at big boy liquidity down down below 35 I mean this is California gold rush down here I, I just would not believe that price does not want to come does not want to come to this gold rush down here this is a big fat like this is this liquidity down here is is just like walking around with you know five five grand in cash in the hood down here I mean, this is waiting to be robbed I mean, you don't even realize how many stops are going to be down here from between between people that got long during New York lunch down to all this internal Asian range liquidity. All right, this is, you don't even realize how much liquidity is down here. Your book map's showing you liquidity down here. I guarantee you that. All right, let's stop with the joking. Let's uh, check dollar index. I want to see the dollar index now turn higher. Um, it's not doing that at this very moment. Um, coming down to an order block. Order block right here.
Want to see the dollar index find support on this order block. We've also got this BISI down here, these equal lows, so it could be a good re reasonable place for the dollar index to come back higher. I'm being sad. If this is if this is going to be another loss, that would be you know pretty upsetting. You can hear it in my voice. Oh man, am I going to upload a fucking three hour long video? Four hour long video? Well, y'all want to see live day trading. That appears to be the... What they want. Are you kidding me right now? This thing wants to come up back to buy side after all this sell side is built up? Are you joking? Is that a joke? Yeah, definitely closed below the low that took us to the high. Definitely had a fair value gap form on the way. Definitely inverted a uh, volume balance inefficiency here. It, it, you know, the only thing I can think is that if it does want to continue to go higher, buy side inefficiency is higher. Uh, buy side liquidity and buy side inefficiency is up there. Dollar index is, you know, not moving up the way that I want it to. It looks like it might continue to want to go down. So. If that's if it wants to go higher, it's going up to like seventy six. And beyond the ancient frog, come with me to I, my eye is firmly down here. I got two eyes right now because we're in a seek and destroy sort of environment, just clearing out both sides of the book. But my eye is down at a lower eye. I'm looking down at lower eye. I'm not seeing it. You know, this. This would be a very reasonable uh, breakaway gap right there. Breakaway gap. That would be a, a very good looking breakaway gap right there. I really don't want to see price come up there, but uh, it is. I can't deny what I'm seeing. Alright, well, uh, don't want to, yeah, this is not what I want to see. It is what it is. Got a one minute close above when I was hoping there was a breakaway gap. Really did not want to see that get filled like that. I don't want to put my stop in inefficiency. This is tough. All right, I'm gonna go there. I'm not putting it in. I'm not well. All right, put a one tick higher. 
I don't want to see what I'm saying. I really wanted to see this remain open. We've now rebalanced this gap. I'll draw a box on it. All right, here was that gap that I wanted to be a breakaway gap. Right there. Wanted to see that. Really wanted to see that remain open remove this that that's been well explored now that's no longer inefficient I mm. really wanted to see that remain open Well, the good news is, is that we did find some resistance up at that gap on a one minute chart. It's just really unbelievable to me that price would not want to come down and, and plunder this gold mine down here. As, you know, unbelievable to me, but then again. I'm not going to get so wedded to it that I'm going to blow my account on it. So, you know, it is what it is. We did get a lower high. One of Michael's series on, he, I forgot what it was, the Market Maker Primer Series, maybe? Uh, this would be, an, because this was a high made through an inefficiency, It this would be a uh, intermediate term high right there. Not really one of his concepts that I use a lot. But that would be an intermediate term high. I, you know, do we want to come up and just come up and into these buy side inefficiencies? I, you know, that's, that's another option. Really want to watch the dollar index here. That's that's what I want to see on the dollar index. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's what I want to see. This is the kind of action that I do want to see on the dollar index. That's that's positive. That's very positive. Go away. Alright. Remember, we are always looking at the dollar index, and this, my friends, is exactly what we wanted to see on the dollar index right there. Just use that unfilled portion of that bissy right there. Find support, rip higher. That's that's what we wanted to see. I'm not going to lie to you. That is, that is exactly what we want to see. And now, we're coming back to this old inefficiency. I'd like to see it get up to the blue box. Blue box would be good. Blue box would be good. That's what I want to see in the dollar index. If you're wondering, have I watched literally everything Michael Huddleston has done? The, the answer is yes, I've watched literally everything Michael Huddleston has done. Everything. And I've watched most of it twice. So, I do know that in one of his videos, he will mention to you that when a high is made through an inefficiency like this, it is immediately an intermediate term high. It's not a short term high, it's an intermediate term high because it's made through this inefficiency. 
where exactly which video off the top of my head he said that I don't remember but he does say that everything Michael's done I watched and I'll probably just end up watching the whole thing for a third time um, okay so yeah inter intermediate term I here I wanted to see this be a breakaway gap I did not want to see this get uh, redelivered and rebalanced but it was uh, we do see that now it inverted okay so inversion means what is inversion come back up to the inefficiency turn we're seeing a little bit of that I like that I like that a lot I want to see that you can see how much work mentally I have to put in for just one trade so I've definitely been making a mistake trying to trade multiple things at once doesn't mean eliminate all your products and don't use your intermarket relationships folks that's not what I'm saying and you're deaf if you think that's what I'm saying you still want to pick the right market to trade in this instance you could have also traded the New Zealand or the Australian those were both good options but I settled in on the NASDAQ as it is our bearish leader the NASDAQ is our bearish leader here um, in the after, you know in the Asian session coming to the end of the Asian session um, coming into New York midnight. So we are about to get a slow hour, my friends. It is about to do a whole lot of nothing. Coming up on... New York midnight. I, I can't believe I'm still running this recording. This might be a five hour long recording. Uh, unbelievable. I I don't know. I'm going to have to delete this video file pretty quickly. It's going to be a big, big file. It's going to be a big upload, big file. Long wick is an in This is, you know, I'm going to be honest with you folks. If you want to really learn professional day trading, if you're not there yet, this would be the video to watch. You're seeing me manage positions. You're seeing me take break, break even losses. You're seeing how long I have to stick in these things to get the targets that I want. I mean, this is really it. This is live day trading. So this is probably not going to be a very highly viewed video, maybe 10 views. But there's going to be a couple hardcore guys out there watching my shit, and good on you. Because this is where it's at. This is where it's at. Okay, coming back up to that same red box. I want to see it find resistance at red box. I really want to see it find resistance at the red box. Don't want to see it trade through the red box again. Want to see this thing shoot lower? 
Want to see displacement? Oh, yeah. Don't want to see it come back up to red box at this point. If it does, I want to see it continue to act as resistance. Coming up on New York Midnight. Oh, yeah. Check out our daily candle. Hide the drawings. Probably looking at a black day. Probably looking at a red day on the NASDAQ. Okay. Micromanaging the trade here, you can see. Could have traded the Australian. Could have traded New Zealand. Those were both nice movers. Um, natural gas is moving, but good lord, is this tough to tough to take on this time of day. It wouldn't be something that I would feel great doing. You know, these are not. Uh, you try trading this on a one-minute chart. Possible, doable, difficult. Let's check out what the ES has done. Yeah, I just don't like the way that these candles look on the NASDAQ, or sorry, ES at this time of the day. You can see they're illiquid. Uh, but that being said, if the NASDAQ, you know, sorry, if the ES had the most movement, I would have traded this instead of the NASDAQ. Check the YM. Yeah, I mean, you can see here, YM five-minute chart. The basic, like, structure on the ES and the YM is about the same as the NASDAQ, but it's, it's so painfully slow. But the ES is, is the structure is about the same. Okay. But the NASDAQ has shown the greatest willingness to go down. This is our bearish leader. We're down three-tenths of a percent on the firm resettlement. I don't want to see it come back up to red box. If it does come up to red box, I want to see it invert, continue to act as resistance. Großen Kreise tanzen wir auf jene Weise, bis das erste Morgenlicht unser Traume wäre Blech. In der Nähe werden unsere Träume klingen und die Winde werden unsere Glieder gehen. Lass uns mit den Wolken über das Feuer springen. Okay, um, oh Lord, I hope I don't get copyrighted, copyright rip bullshit for that. Probably not. I'll probably be okay. This past two hours in the video. Two and a half hours in the live recording. Looking at the NASDAQ, it is 2350 New York local time. Uh, as much as, you know, I am making this for YouTube views, I'm also making it to improve my own day trading. So this is also a video journal experience for me. I'm talking out loud. I'm, I'm not hiding my thoughts, you know, deep inside my conscious. Um... I'm talking out loud, you know, giving myself out loud thoughts, practicing my ICT trading live, uh, starting, from, starting from looking at the dollar index like we always do, then looking to see what product we want to trade. I settled on the NASDAQ as it is our bearish leader. Bearish leader since resettlement down three-tenths of a percent. Uh, ES and YM are sitting. ES is down uh, about eight points since resettlement, and YM is down... 12 points since resettlement. Russell 2000 is down uh, just more than two, two points since resettlement. So the NASDAQ is our bearish leader. That is why I chose to trade the NASDAQ because it's showing us the most willingness to move. Um, you know, the natural gas, it, it, it was an option. I'm not going to lie to you. It was an option from resettlement uh, to take to the long side. Let me see. Where was resettlement? Right there. There was a trade here. Difficult. I'm saying that. I'm kind of poo-pooing it. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, okay. There was a simple trade on natural gas right here. There was your inefficiency. 
right there to enter on. <laughs> Very exciting day trading, no. But it did give you uh, thirty three ticks. Every single night when me down would come on time. Who is this? I see snakes. Come out, you black and tans. Come out and bite me like a man. Alright, let's see what this is. 22 ticks. That's $220. That's $222 per contract. Uh, it was possible. Oh, no. NASDAQ is coming back up to the red box. Where are the snares and jeers? When our leaders of 16 were executed. Come then, show your wife how you have let us down flat. How the Ayane made you run like hell away from the green and lovely lanes of kill and Oh boy. They and fingers and balls and arrows. Bravely you faced one with your sixteen pounder gone. And you rights and all the knitters to the metal. Alright. Show your wife uh, you want medals down and play and do stubborn out the eye. Okay, 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 Druzia, Druzia. А где мы найдемся? Где мы сейчас? Мы на высоте диапазона. Alright, one minute chart. NASDAQ. Just formed an inefficiency. Coming up on New York midnight. Coming up on our daily candle. As you know, I don't really use the daily candle from resettlement. I look at New York midnight, as that is what Michael Huddleston teaches. That is the new day of the 24-hour banking cycle. We do expect this to be a very slow time right now as we come up on the new the new 24-hour banking cycle. Got to, you know, between our position and the stop, we've built up a little bit of price action. So, it's yeah, do I feel great about this at this point? No. Do I feel terrible about this? No. So, Am I am I gonna let this thing play out? Yes. Okay. Ah, this is very tough. Coming up on New York midnight. It's doing a lot of nothing right now. Let's check out our dollar index. Yeah, look at that. You, you ever, you know, sometimes you folks think that there's not algorithms in these marketplaces, and it's kind of silly when you think that. Like, do you really think humans do this? Does that really look human to you? I mean, really, does that really look human to you? It's, it's not. Just the fact that you people still think this is like this is the 1930s like does that does that really look like 1935 to you it's it's not but I mean if you want to continue to believe that it's okay I will tolerate you you can be you know you can sit in your wrongness this is algorithms folks this this is trading algorithms Trading algorithms all the way down to the objective. 
Like, humans don't do this. I'm going to tell you. This is all algorithmic. This is computerized price action. I mean, if you really believe that this is human beings doing this, it's silly. Very silly. Um, okay. Back to El Nesdaco. I'd like to see that volume imbalance remain open. That would be spectacular. I'm going to take a step away from El Screen. El Ecran, Drusia. Yashas Paidu, Drusia. Yashas Paidu. I'm back. We are at New York midnight. 
And where was our opening candle? Right there. Is it up? There was our New York open right there. Okay, there was. The new 24 hour banking cycle has begun, my friends. Welcome to the new 24 hour banking cycle. So, in case y'all wanted to learn some Russian, the Russian word for range in a trading sense is diapazon. 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 Мы сейчас находимся в диапазоне. All right. New York opening candle there came in at 15,063 and a quarter. The next hour should be very quiet. Can't believe I'm going to do a recording this long. But I will. I'll get it done. So we are tracking our inefficiencies as they form, and so as we get inefficiencies come in, we box them. Here we've got a civi forming right here. Вот это да, друзья. There's our civi right there, red box civi. If you are Russian by any chance, I'd love to learn more about um, how to speak Russian in a trading sense. Highs, lows, inefficiency. I do speak Russian. Я говорю на русском языке, я говорю в по-русски. Просто песен знаю, где все спою, иду вся, ой, Маруся. Все спою, ой, иду вся, ой, Маруся. Потрясло она. All right, my friends, we've just, uh, we're up now most people's daily wage. We're going for a healthy daily wage, my friends. I've, I see no reason why this thing should not come take out the sell side. Might be a few hours, though. See no good reason why this thing should not come take out sell side.
All right. It's going to be a long ass video. We are trading the electronic trading hours. And looking pretty good. Five minutes looking good. Displacement lower, close below structure. Sell side. I mean, look at all the stops that are going to be down here. The eye, the eye is down here. The eye of Ra is down here. Look at that. Look at that eye. The eye is down here. The eye of Ra is right here, my friends. The eye of Ra is sitting lower. The sun god's eye, the eye of Ra, is much lower. Glas Ra is this. Мы по пути туда. Мы найдем успех. Друзья, мы найдем успех. Все будет хорошо, мы продолжаем шоу. Упрямый нас душой, идем победим мы большой и хорошо. Yeah, my friends, the eye of Ra is sitting much lower. I want to use big eye. Big eye of Ra's down here. It's dancing down here. The eye of Ra. It's much lower. That eye down there, he's watching. All of you folks that are long, the eye is watching. The eye of Ra is watching you if you were long after all this. The eye is watching. Got a close below structure here. All right, one minute chart coming back up to our one minute uh, sibi. Coming back up into our one minute Sibby. It is time to listen to a wonderful YouTube channel that I listen to, and that is um, The History of the Universe. I love it. Nice and British, soothing British voice of soothing Brit Britannia. Very soothing English accent. I love it. I love it. And learn about the stars, the stars, history of the universe.
There's no fucking way that anybody's watched this entire video. I don't believe it. No one on this earth would spend what is probably going to be a four or five hour long video. I can't believe it. Oh man, I'm going to take out my whole fucking hard drive with this one recording. i got to delete this as soon as it gets uploaded. It's going to be an hour long upload. Holy moly. But, tis what it is. I like showing y'all the live trading. I like showing you that it can be done. Difficult, yes. Doable, also yes. You know, as you can see, if you really want to refine your entries, you got to be on the one minute chart, even the second chart. But yeah, you got to be on the one minute chart if you really want to get these refined entries. Coming back up into our SIBI right here. Got a SIBI right here. I would like to see price treat that with respect come lower. Don't really want to see it put me back into drawdown now. Although, I will typically tell you that what uh, Price likes to do right about this time of day, come back up, run that 12 a.m. high, the 12 a.m. open, and then turn lower. And so that's, it could bring me all the way back up into drawdown and then turn lower. Do I want to see that happen? No. And I, I likely, you know, what I'd really like to see is this SIBI get inverted, turn lower. This is our nice first swing of the day, I think. I think we're coming up on our first swing of the day, uh, which is going to be about a 30-point move, I think. I think we're looking at, um, let's take a look at our dollar index. Dollar index is coming up here on a five-minute order block, five-minute order block. Um, you see that we inverted this BISI once. Sorry, we found support on this BISI once. I'd like to see it find support on this BISI again, trade higher. I'll delete this box, delete this box, and delete this box. Okay, I'd like to see it come back down to this BISI and then move higher, or even just move higher here at the order block. Yes sir, yes sir, yes sir. Um, structure's looking good. Displacement lower. We're on the two minute chart. You can see our one minute SIBI up here, red box. Red box is a one minute SIBI. You have no idea what a SIBI is, you need to watch my channel, you need to subscribe. Unless you want to keep using all your shit that doesn't work. And then come preach to me how it does work, which is fine. You can preach to me all you want about your bullshit. If it works for you, then obviously use it. If you are finding consistent profitability with your volume profile on the right side of the chart, um, all these cumulative delta, if that is working for you, then uh, continue to use it. Um, I have a hard time believing that it is working for you because uh, I don't believe it. You know, I don't believe it does. But if it is, use it. Trees hold on. I, I'm looking to be a day trading freak of nature. You know, that's really my end goal is to be uh, a day, day, day trading freak of nature. Um, my goal is to make over $1 million day trading, and, and, and that's a long ways off. Believe me, that's probably four to five years off, but I believe that I can get there. I believe that I can get funded with Top Step, and and I believe that I can get to that first payout, you know, within the month. I'm at step two. This is step two. I think I I think by the end of the week I can get funded if I continue to trade well, trade with confidence, accurately read price. Okay, what did we see there? Came down into uh, liquidity, short-term liquidity. Got a got a rejection off that. We're currently working into a two-minute uh, SIBI. 
currently working into uh, Civi. Okay, probably coming back up to the red box. Probably going to put me into drawdown, and then turn lower. If unless you know, here's the thing, right? We leave this red box open. If we don't deliver, re-deliver into red box, that's a that would be a very good sign for my position. If we can leave red box open, it could be a breakaway gap that does not get re-delivered. You know, similar to this over here. Um, that would be a very good sign. Dollar index. Dollar index is doing what I want it to do. You know, dollar index is looking good. Um, looking at this volume imbalance right here. Found support on that. Let's see if we can go get some go get some liquidity. So what is yellow box? Yellow box is going to be an inverted volume imbalance here if we can respect it. All right. So that would be an inverted uh, volume imbalance if we respect it and turn lower. That would become an inverted volume imbalance. That would be a very good sign for lower prices. And you know all of your folks that are sitting so let's go up to the 15 minute chart this is our New York regular trading hour session this is going to be a New York lunch uh, short-term low so there will be liquidity below this short-term low there will be liquidity below all three of these Asian Asian session lows the reason why my three contracts are coming off here is because it's one tick below uh, this low here with spread so it's this is 3575 my order is at 3525 the reason for that is that we're usually at a two to three tick spread here so I'm looking at this low plus spread and that's that's what I'm looking to take as a target for three contracts now I don't want to limit myself you know one of the things about day trading good day trading is that uh, you do need to take profits, but this is all a balancing act. So I'm going to remove that eye. That eye is not in play right now. Remove that line, and I'll leave the. Eh, I'm going to remove the alert. Um, so, you know, as you can see, that when certain ideas of mine uh, become no longer relevant to what I'm doing right now, just remove the drawings. So. You know, uh, what am I trying to say? Like, you use your drawings when they're relevant to what you're doing and then remove them. You know, that's day trading. Your ideas expire. They are transient. Valuable, but transient. Okay. You can see this volume imbalance was originally support coming back below it invert it turn lower if you have no idea what I'm talking about you need to go watch my channel you need to go watch my ICT inefficiencies explained ICT concepts algorithmic trading it is my banner video you might be wondering why am I not live streaming live streaming and that is because you're gonna ask me a whole bunch of inane questions and if you don't know what a name means go look it up and that's the kind of questions you're going to ask me and I'm not interested in answering them okay um, 
However, if you want to see Michael Huddleston's concepts in action, I am providing you that. I am providing you Michael's concepts in action. Inefficiencies, liquidity, time of day, relative strength analysis. It's all there. Watching the dollar index, even though I'm not trading it, I'm drawing inefficiencies as they come in. I'm using them as dynamic support and resistance. I'm looking at our market maker profile, so this would be a seek and destroy. And I'm also looking at our session, our session lows, so I'm looking at liquidity targets as well. I mean, really, I'm using the whole toolbox, and that's, that's how you get entries like you see here. Is this a perfect entry? No. I really would have preferred to be the top tick. You know, I was five points off the top tick, which is unfortunate. I do not like uh, being off by five ticks or five points. It's a lot to me. I'm trying to be a freak of nature here, and freak of nature is not five points off. really want to be the top tick. And the only way that, you know, you could have been the top tick here is betting that this was a turtle soup, which I did not bet that that was a turtle soup. Possible difficult to, to take a trade here and try and turtle soup that. The other option was obviously waiting for it to come back through this inefficiency here. Uh, I didn't know at the time that this inefficiency was going to get traded back into like this, so there, there was that. Uh, I am five points away from the high. You know, I'm trying to be a freak of nature, so that's not going to happen. Uh, well, I should say it it can happen. Um, I didn't know that this that you know this candle right here. This I'll show you what's pissing me off is that I, I didn't foresee that happening right there. I thought that this, you know, this sibby right there was going to stay open. It did not. Got closed, got rebalanced. You're probably also thinking to yourself, like, well, isn't this guy egotistical? In a manner of speaking, I am, but I'm trying to be confident in the trading that I'm doing so that I'm not, you know, I'm letting these trades play out. I'm confident in my entries. Because if you just start taking a bunch of losses and you, you know, you think that if you don't have a little bit of an ego, okay, your ego should be at the door, but you, you can't also have, you can't, like, what am I trying to say? You can't have anti-ego as well. You can't be in the dumps and depressed, or you're not going to be confident in your entries, and you're just, you're not going to let these trades play out. How else do I say that? Like, you've got to be confident in what you're doing. It, you know, I don't know what to tell you. Because if I were not confident in what I'm doing, I'd be taking off the trade right now. But I'm not going to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to. This thing might retrace all the way back up to the yellow box. I'm not taking the trade off because I am pretty convicted that we want to take out sell side liquidity. That's what I'm convicted about. I'm convicted we're going to take sell side liquidity. I know I want to get these trades. I want to get these nice big running trades, 30 points. I want it. And you're not going to get there if you don't let any retracements happen. So it is what it is. This thing could absolutely retrace against me, and I, it doesn't invalidate my short. That being said, stop is, um, I do want to teach you responsible day trading as well. And so I'm going to put it stop now right there. And you might be wondering, well, why is it not at break even? Because that's inefficient. I never am going to put my, I do not want to put my um, stop loss up here at this SIBI right next to my break even, because that is an inefficient price. And I'm not going to put my stop loss in an inefficiency. Coming up here on our first, um, okay, we're probably going to get a reaction off this. All right. Probably going to get a reaction off this. Probably going to see a retracement now. There is a volume imbalance there. You can see that we are reacting off the low of that. But, but, but. There is another one right there that could invert, right there. So two inefficiencies we're working in between right now. This is also buy side inefficient that could invert. So at this point, we've got multiple inefficiencies here that could invert. I'm going to show you the next one that could invert is right there. Okay, all of these are inefficiencies that we formed on the way up, and they can all invert back on the way down, meaning price is going to have a very difficult time coming back up to uh, to my stopping me out basically because any of these inefficiencies could invert so come up here turn lower you 
you see we got a reaction off that. Next reaction is probably going to be right there. I'm looking down here. Difference between ego and confidence. Let's talk about that. I'm confident in my entries, not as confident in my exits. I'm confident in my ability to analyze price. But I'm not trying to tell you that, that I'm working magic here. This is not black magic. Okay, I don't believe that... I believe that the skill that I'm showing you here, okay, is transferable. I think that if you put in the same amount of work... That if, you, that if you do the exact same things that I've been doing, which is going and studying Michael's work, putting in a lot, of, a lot of grind time into algorithmic theory, if you make the sacrifices that I've made, if you, you know, it, it, this is not black magic. I'm not um, working some sort of magic on the chart. I'm following repeatable patterns, um, following a premise that these markets are driven by computerized algorithms okay so or a computerized algorithm we'll just say a an algorithm that is algorithmic theory so it's not black magic I'm interpreting what I believe a computerized algorithm is doing and trying to follow it as it does it real time okay it's not black magic Okay, so a couple of things here. We've got a BISI over here. We've got a SIBI right here. Either one of those can invert and take price lower. So I'm feeling pretty good that I will not be stopped out here. See, we get a reaction at the top of this SIBI, also inverting this BISI over here. And, and the reason why I'm not live streaming this and just recording it is because you're then going to ask me a bunch of questions like, do I trade BTC? The answer is no. You're going to ask me a bunch of fucking stupid questions that are going to distract me, and I would rather not be distracted. I'd rather make money, even fake money. This is fake money, but not fake money, because it's getting me to... An account in which I can make money so it is fake and it's not and ideally what I'm trying to do today is get to my profit limit on top step so I can get to working on my apex account as well start to rack up the rack up the simulated dollars okay
I don't like what I'm seeing. Like to see this Sibby invert or this buy side. Uh, sorry, this Sibby would just be straight resistance. This Bissy would be inverted. So we're looking at both. We're looking at this Bissy on the left and the Sibby right here. And I'd like to see either one of those things drive price back down. Oh, really, I guess that would be a balanced price range, right? Kind of, right? Higher time frame, maybe. Whatever, I'll just keep them separate. Bissy, Sibby. Sibby is resistance. Bissy can be inverted resistance. Either one would lead price to go lower. Uh, dollar index. Beautiful, beautiful action here on the dollar. Uh, really, really liking the action I'm seeing on the dollar. Put an eye. The eye of raw is going to go right there. There's the eye of raw. He's looking at you. He's dancing. He's looking at you. There's the eye of raw. Love to see that on the dollar index. Really would love to see more of that. Okay. Do I like what I'm seeing right now? No, I do not. Uh uh. Not at all. I really don't want to see it get through an invert. Because then it could shoot back up to red box. And I'm not interested in coming back up to red box. Ah, there's yellow box. All right, we're pulling it. We're pulling it. That was 620. All right. It's coming back up to yellow box. Might all the way come by all the way back up to red box. Probably try and get short again. Still following the NASDAQ as it is our bearish leader. I'd be interested at yellow box. I, I did not want to see this thing on the two minute chart you can see our Bissy and Sibby here now this Sibby can invert and go higher and, and it's probably coming back to yellow box I really didn't want to see it come back to yellow box so we're probably looking at a deep retracement here and I'm probably going to have to get short again to get down to the eye of Ra this thing you know it could come all the way back up to red box so we are currently up um, 400. <laughs> Not what I ideally wanted. Came down to this five minute busy, found support. It's gonna be a slow grind down, huh? Okay, it's Probably coming back up to yellow box. All right, I'm going to stop the recording here. Um, if I get back in a trade, I'll start it back up and record that. Um, I'm just going to be watching it now. Uh, watching to see if it comes back up to the yellow box uh, watching the dollar index um, and yeah that's about it gonna be watching the Nasdaq it is our bearish leader uh, I would want to get short again uh, if I do get short again I'll start up a new recording bye